Welcome back to Level Construction. In this video, Logan's going to kick things off by first creating our new map in an additive world, and then from there, he's going to begin setting up our BSP shell, just the basic BSP for our level. Right. So let's get started with a new map. We'll, go, we'll grab File New, and we want to make this an additive world. That, of course, means that we're going to need to do stuff like create a wall, floors, and ceiling for the level because we're going to have to construct the shell ourselves. That's right. We're not going to be subtracting out space from a world of solid mass. Exactly. Now, I want to begin with the, uh, the floor of this level, but before I create any brushes, I want to have a material already selected. Um, since we know that in the end we don't want to have the null material applied to anything, I'm going to begin with the base material already selected. So I'm going to jump into the generic browser, and I'm going to load in a package. We'll open up from environments. We're going to be looking for the HU base package. And inside of here, let's uh, restrict things down to material. So I'll uncheck static meshes for the moment, and we'll bring up material. Inside of material, let me reselect uh, HU base. And let's scroll down until I find one called Sidewalk. There should be a uh, Sidewalk 01 material. As a matter of fact, let me temporarily switch over to Square Texture Mode so I can find this. And there it is. It's HU Base uh, BSP Sidewalk 01. That's the material that I'm going to apply to all of the walls for the BSP. Now, with that selected, we can turn our attention back to the level. I'm going to move out here in the perspective view a little bit, and let's set up the Builder Brush to represent the floor of the level. So I'm going to bring up the properties for the Builder Brush so that I can give an X and Y dimension of 1024. And I'm going to set the Z dimension to 32. All of the walls and floors are going to have a, a thickness of uh, 32. This will make it somewhat easier to work with. It's not an absolute necessary thing. It's just a good, good reference to start out with. We'll build that. I'll leave the, uh, the brush aligned where it was in Z. If we scroll out, we can see that it's pretty much still centered on the world, which is fine. So with this brush now, we'll um, add this into the level. So I'll use the Control-A shortcut, and we have the floor base created. With that created, I can move the uh, builder brush back out of the way. So let me just slide this back over. And I seem to have lock selection turned on, so we'll turn that off so we can move the builder brush back out of the way. So here's our additive brush. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add all the little um, alcoves in this level. There's going to be a little indention into the wall that's going to hold the elevator up on this top side. And there's also going to be a kind of little steam and generator room down on this side. It's going to, going to have a little bit of lighting in it. So I want to get the floor laid out so that those cutout pieces actually have a, a place to go. I'm going to begin with the cutout that's down on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is simply duplicate the floor brush. I'll hold Alt and drag the brush down to the bottom. And then I'll jump into vertex editing mode. So we need to go into geometry mode, make sure that we're in uh, vertex selection mode so that we can start sizing this down. I want the size in Y to be about half sized, and I also want to move this from uh, world space and not local. So in world space, we'll drag this over about to the center. So I mean, that's pretty much the center line. If you want to measure to make sure, of course, you can always zoom in and use the middle click to drag out a uh, measuring line if you're unsure about the measurements. But there is 512, so this little outcropping is going to be about, uh, or exactly half of the width of the room. So we'll edit those in. Now we'll drag these other vertices in somewhat about here. So I've got, I'm going by uh, major grid lines here. I've got my grid set to, uh, drag grid set to 16. And looking at the more prominent uh, darker lines, I'm out about two major grid spaces out. That's, that's just how I'm aligning these. Um, I also want to take the outsides and drag them in just a little bit so we have a nice kind of rounded uh, shape. Zoom in just a little bit to make sure that I'm on the major grid lines. So um, that's the outcropping on this side. Of course, we could build geometry if we want to get an instant visual result, but uh, there's the little outcropping. Now, I want the outcropping on the top side to extend off the edge a little bit, so that kind of goes all the way around. I'm going to start with this shape, though, so I'm going to deselect all the vertices, make sure that just the mesh itself is selected, so that I can switch to rotation mode, and then alt-drag the rotation in Z so that I can duplicate this mesh around. Uh, notice I'm still in geometry mode. I left it on because I'm, I'm going to use it here for a different brush. I just made sure to deselect all vertices before I grab the brush for duplication. Uh, let me hit the spacebar a few times so I can jump back to translation and move this brush up into the corner here. I'm going to align on this side. 
so that this uh, vertex or th these two vertices will line up with the edge of the main room brush. So that means I need to drag it just a little bit more and we have it lining up there. So now I can kind of see the area that I need to fill in with the uh, final brush. And for that one, let me grab the floor, the main floor once again, alt drag to duplicate it off and align it up on the X edge so that's all, uh, that's all aligned. Then I want to take the two top vertices and drag them down to match the outcropping here. And then I want to take the two vertices on the right and move them into exactly half the width of the main floor. And then take these final two top vertices and move them in about two major grid units in. So we have, you can say, two major blocks here, two major blocks here to move this in. And then we have a nice rounded outcropping on this side. And if we wanted to, we could, of course, build geometry again and just take a look at the result. So we've got a nice uh, floor base going, so we've got both outcroppings on the top and bottom side. Now we're ready to take a look at putting in the walls for this section, or for this room. So to begin with the first wall, what I want to do is I'm going to set up a, uh, a wall with the same thickness that the floor has, set it up on this side, then I'll begin duplicating that brush and moving along the outer edge and simply adding br brushes as I need to fit the, uh, the contour of the floor. So let's jump out of geometry mode now. Let's go back to camera mode and let's bring up the Builder Brushes properties. I want to give a, uh, an X, let's see, looking at it, we've got X up and down here, so I want to set that to 32 since that's going to be our wall thickness. And I'll set the Y and Z to 512. So 512, 512. And that's been built, so we can close out of the Builder options. Let me make sure I deselect that other brush so that I can control drag and align this brush up into the corner here. I also want to make sure that I align it in one of the uh, uh, front or side views since it's sitting there on the center of the floor and I want to move it up. I'm actually going to move it all the way up so that it's resting directly on top of this floor here so you can kind of see it's, it's sitting up on the top. Now with this in place we should still have that same material selected so I can add this in as well so I use Control A shortcut, we'll add that in, and then drag the builder out of the way. So there we have our first wall piece. Now I want to go along each of these edges and duplicate this over and move it into place. So for the first one, I'll do an Alt drag and line this up so that these two vertices match. And then I'm going to jump into geometry mode because I'm going to do this um, kind of edge by edge almost. I'm going to stay in uh, vertex mode because that makes the selections easier. So that means from the top view now, if we want to grab all these, we could do control alt uh, drag a selection around those vertices, and just snap them into place so that they match um, this one contour. Now you'll note that because of the way these are being dragged, there's a little bit less width in this wall than over here. Um, I'm not really going to worry about that too much, since as the player, we can only see from the inside, so you really can't tell how thick the walls are. The key is just keeping it to where the walls don't get so thin that it gets hard to work with. So as long as there's enough width for us as the level designer work with, I'm going to call it fair game. So that's going to be the process. I'm going to stay in uh, geometry mode the whole time so I don't have to keep jumping in and out, but I will make sure to reselect the whole brush before I duplicate, make sure there's no vertices selected. So I can Alt-Drag and move the brush over, make sure that this side is lined up. Then select the two vertices on the end and move them in. Then we can select the brush again, Alt-Drag to duplicate. Make sure that the one end is aligned. Select both of the vertices on the other end and move those into place. Now for this side, I want to actually grab a brush and rotate it so I don't mess up the uh, texture coordinates too much. So what I'll do is I'll go probably over to this one. Well, as a matter of fact, for the sake of the pivot, I might go all the way back to this one. And uh, alt drag to duplicate the whole brush, move it up along this wall. I'm going to jump into rotation for a second so that I can rotate the whole brush 90 degrees. Then back into translation and then grab some vertices. So we'll move these vertices in. And now if you look really close, what's happening here is the brushes are kind of overlapping. And I kind of want to clean that up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take the uh, two inner vertices and move them out a little bit so that they kind of rest along the same line as the other brush. Select that brush and move its vertices so that they kind of meet a, at a corner. And I could maybe look for a better compromise on the corner. 
I don't know. I think the, I think the other ones. Are yeah, I, I do too. That's moving this over made this brush a little bit too wide. Yeah. So I kind of like that for the compromise. So that way we have a nice edged corner, and we don't have the, the uh, brushes overlapping. And then let me grab this side, and drag these vertices back in so that they're the right width. And knowing that we're going to have to kind of corner these a little bit, I'm going to drag that vertex or those two vertices back a little bit. Then I can take the whole brush, um, not select the properties, just the brush and alt drag to duplicate and let me line it up um, grab some of the vertices align those two back grab these two or these four actually uh, move them up and then we'll catch the corner of the brush that looks about right so I'll duplicate I'll grab this one and duplicate so I'll move this one and then I'll zoom back in so I can see how the alignment's working we'll align this grab these two vertices and snap them so that they make or finish off this corner then we'll go to the other side, we'll grab these vertices, and we'll drag them down to the very end, so we've got this longer wall now. Drag these in, and I'm pretty sure these are going to be flat up against the wall. Now, if you remember, this brush was actually the one that this side was duplicated from, and since they share the same shape, I could go in and grab all three of these wall pieces now, and duplicate all of them. So I could jump into rotation mode and duplicate by holding Alt and then dragging in Z so we get a nice 90 degree duplication of all of those. So looking there is about 90. And uh, yeah, that's looking good. Jump back into movement for a second and didn't mean to deselect them, so we'll reselect them. Let me zoom in a little bit and grab all of these brushes. And I'm yeah, I think geometry tools might be giving you just a little bit of a hard time yeah. with that. I selected them to duplicate yeah. them somehow, but once <laughs> I dropped them, just couldn't get them back. But so once we have all of them selected, I want to move them all down and make sure that they still snap in here. And they do very, very nicely, nice. so this yeah. is already lined up. We even have this one already sticking out the correct amount to make that angled edge. So let's find another convenient brush that's pointing the right way. Let's grab this one. And let's alt drag duplicate and set it up so that it snaps into place. Um, jump back into geometry mode. Make sure that we're in vertex selection mode so that we can grab these two, finish off the corner, and grab these two, or excuse me, these four actually, and drag them to the very edge of the floor and make sure that these are not at an angle. Get them nice and squared off at the edge. So if we zoom back now, it looks like we've got all of the walls placed in so we can rebuild geometry. And looking at this, I would say we've got walls, at least three quarters of the way around now. Cool. And let's see, I'll worry about texture alignment once we get more of this built, but I mean, we've got the nice outcropping, everything's looking fairly nice. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at getting the uh, ceiling put into place. Now let me jump out of geometry editing mode for a minute and let's grab the floor brush and that's the wrong part of the floor. Let's grab this one, the full floor, and let me duplicate that up to the top. So once again, an alt drag, and I'll set that up to be just above all of the wall brushes. And looking at this, let's see. We should have a height of that lined up. And really, I should have grabbed all the two floors. I'll leave that in place. I also want to make sure that I get these outcroppings, because if we look up, we can see that that's the square edge. We don't have the little outcropping pieces. So let me zoom back in. As a matter of fact, to grab those, I'm going to jump into brush wireframe mode in perspective so that I can more easily grab those side brushes. And there's the final one. There's all three. And I'm going to duplicate those as well. So we'll all drag those up to the top and align them the same. So if we go back to unlit and build geometry now, we should have a nice ceiling with all the outcroppings kept in. Now the next thing I want to do is take a look at this part of the ceiling directly above us. Right now the ceiling is one giant piece and the entire thing is flat. And the final level we want to make sure that we have a kind of indention up into the ceiling so that we can place more meshes as well as some lights. So First thing I want to do is split up this brush so that it's actually two pieces and then I'll add in the necessary edit so we can get kind of an indented uh, ceiling. So I'll begin with the entire ceiling and let me uh, edit it a little bit so that it's uh, only half the width. 
So I'll jump back into geometry editing mode so that I can select two of the vertices on one side and drag them in so that the uh, width is half of its original, so now we're at the exact half of the floor. Because then I can select the entire brush and then alt drag to duplicate, and now we have two different uh, ceiling pieces. So there is, let me rebuild geometry so we can see about how much space those are taking up. So we've got two separate pieces now. Now what I want to do is to make an extrusion into this brush. So that way we'll have some volume that we can add right up above it. So what I'll do is I'll jump into face selection or polygon selection mode, select the top face, and then I need to bring up the uh, modifier window so that I can go to extrude. And then with extrude selected, um, let me get a view in uh, the front or side, as I'm looking for this uh, major grid line that's right above. So with um, extrude mode turned on, I can grab this face and drag it up to just match that uh, major grid line. And that's all the extruding I want to do, actually. So I'm going to close out the modifier window and go back to editing. Now I'm going to kind of use this bottom part. I'm going to uh, move all the vertices in and then actually tuck them up inside of it. So what I'm going to do is grab the whole brush. Let me jump back into vertex selection mode and then just grab the brush itself. What I actually want to do here is drag this. You can see that we have this row or this line matching the very top of the ceiling and the one below it just matching in below. What I'm going to do is move it down about 32 units so we actually have these set in below. And thinking about it, that probably means I'll need to take those top vertices and move them up to that major grid line. So let me select the top vertices, move them up so that they match, and then we've got our height back. Now these bottom vertices are actually supposed to be tucked up inside, and that's where we actually get kind of the indention up inside of this uh, brush. So let me start by, let's see, looking at it. The goal that I'm trying to go for is if you're looking at it from this side, going from here to the middle of the ceiling, make that a very gentle slope and make there be more of a sharp slope on this side. So that means looking at it from um, this view, let me grab the bottom two vertices on the left and move them in about 32 units or uh, two grid, grid squares at the 16 unit grid. Now let me also move them up so we have a thickness of about 32 off from the ceiling of this brush. About three grid squares in it look like. Was it three? I was going for that two. That one's two. Yeah. All right, I, I didn't move this one enough then. Let me slide that back. Gotcha. So there we've got about uh, two grid squares. Okay. And two on this side as well. So there we'll kind of have a sharp indention. It'll be easier to see after we rebuild uh, geometry. But um, those are the first two. Now I want to go back to the uh, a side view here and reselect those vertices here and move them in just a bit. Let me zoom out a little so I can get to a good view of what's going on. I want to drag these in to the uh, first major grid line on the inside. As a matter of fact, maybe even the second to give more of a gentle slope. Let me grab both of them and I'll make a decision on how far in I want those to go. Because that might be a little bit too much looking at it. It might be... I mean, really, it's hard to say. That might look good there. But still rebuild. And, uh, but uh, yeah, let me build geometry and uh, see what it's looking like with these. Let's move that out of the way, maybe even... Um, oh, I see what happened. I actually did the edits in the uh, the opposite order. Remember how I said I wanted a gentle slope on that side? Mm -hmm. It's a very sharp slope. Gotcha. So let me swap these around. I had the two views swapped. What I would rather have happen is have the side view be 32 units off the edge. So two grid squares there. And two grid squares here. Then drop down below. And below, let's grab the first major grid line in. So two vertices, move in. Two vertices, move in. And I think that's looking better. If we rebuild geometry now, we've got a nice gentle slope going in this direction. And then a more sharp slope coming in from the inside. Gotcha. But if we look really close, and um, if I deselect the brush for a second... And you'll notice that up here on the top, we've kind of got this edge, and that's because our brush on the outside starts on the very outside edge and moves in. To fix this, what we could do is just take the whole brush and slide all of the vertices in on the edge. Since we can't really see outside of it, that does mean that this will kind of rest on the very edge of the wall instead of on the out outer side, but we can't see that from the inside anyway. So without adding unnecessary detail to this brush, we can just take the 
sides and drag them in so that they rest on the inside of the walls instead of the outside. And if we rebuild now, and uh, let me actually jump out of geometry mode back to camera mode, now I've got a nice smooth transition off of all of the walls. So that makes a nice indention up into the ceiling. And with that, I think that's the geometry for this room, and we can turn our attention into filling out the second room on the, uh, the other side. For that room, let me see what piece I want to start out with. If I want to grab a floor or a wall first. I think I might grab some walls and drag out the, uh, the second room. The idea is that this room on the side is basically just another 1024 um, square, though its height is going to be a little bit more. It's going to have an indention, so instead of having a floor level right across the same as this room, it's actually going to drop down, and then that drop, the indention will be the uh, slime pit. Now, to begin with, I think I'll start with a wall. I'll grab this original wall brush that we had to, to uh, begin with, and I'll simply duplicate the whole thing. So let me all drag this off to the side. Now, I would rather this be uh, 1024 units instead of 512. So I'm just pausing for a second to decide on if it would be wise to make a completely new brush, because then I can see how it's sure. all lining up. Um, because without the major grid units to show... Yeah, let's just do a new builder brush. Or... Oh, wait, I got an idea. If we grab the floor, the floor we know is 1024. True. If I duplicate this guy off first, then we'll know how much to duplicate the wall. I do want to move it down, though, so while we've got it selected, let me drop this floor all the way down. You can see we've got, um... Two major grid lines, so two major grid boxes down, and we'll set this new floor right below that line. So we've got, if we want to measure it, we could actually look in and see, we've probably got about um, 240 units there, between okay. the very bottom of the floor and the very top of this new floor for this line pit. And um, now we can go back to the wall, and we can see exactly how long the wall needs to be. So we can select, uh, let me jump back into geometry editing mode so I can grab these vertices. And we'll drag them out to the very end, make sure that that lines up. And while we're at it, let's also make sure that the height of the wall is correct. So let's jump into the front view. Let's grab the bottom four vertices and move them down just so that they snap onto the very top of the floor. So that looks like one wall. It's looking good as far as dimensions there. So let me duplicate it to the other side. Drag this over. Let me zoom in just a little bit so I can make sure that the... Uh, Go ahead, and I'm not 100% sure that you had reselected. You might want to undo that. Oh, look what happened. Yep. <laughs> yeah, good eye on that. So what had happened is it seems I was in vertex selection mode, and I grabbed the bottom vertices only. So yeah, I still had those from where you had pulled them down. How about we put those right back where they Perfect. were? And how about we reselect the brush so we have the entire thing? Alt drag, and that way we're duplicating and not just dragging the bottom vertices. So there we, now we have a brand new brush on the other side. Did we lose the brush on the... No, it's showing there. There we I go. See, okay. I'm, I'm just, I would need to drop into a yeah, it's brush mode if I wanted to see everything. Yeah, exactly. So that's looking good. Uh, let me jump back into Unlit, which isn't helping because we haven't rebuilt yet. But before we rebuild, I want to get this last brush on the outer wall. So what I'll do is with this one selected, let me duplicate it off. Uh, let me switch into rotation mode, Alt-Drag, and Duplicate and rotate 90 degrees, then move this in place around this edge here. So we can move this in, and it might even be wise to edit the vertices just a little bit so it rests on the inside, just so we don't have the brushes themselves overlapping, just to make the view a little bit more clean. And uh, let me make sure that the height's still working out in this view, and it is. So that looks like all of the walls all the way around uh, let's build geometry and see what that's looking like from the inside. And we're missing a ceiling, and we're missing this little wall piece, but that has to be dropped in since we have an indention now. We need a new wall on this side. Um, the ceiling is easy, so let me duplicate that. We can just grab the floor brush, grab the whole brush, and then duplicate that up to the top. And that'll make an easy ceiling. Now for this wall, what I'll probably do, let me just grab this one we have on the end. I'll duplicate that in, and let me go to a front view so I can find which side I want to line it up to. I'll probably line it up so that the edge is just even with the uh, the main room. So if I slide this back, let me see, and grab these top vertices, 
and slide them. I think I'll align it so that it'll fit right under it. That way I'm not... Yeah. I like the fact that this room is exactly... The first room is exactly 1024 across. So what I'll do is I'll move them just down below it. Um, then I can select the whole brush and uh, move it over. So let me grab here. Zoom back so we can see the manipulator a little bit and slide it back. That way the brush is kind of resting directly under the floor of the room above it. But we have these edges... These corners still kind of joined so we won't be able to see outside of it. So we could build now, make sure we've got that closed in, and that's looking nice now. Now we've got the ceiling in place, we've got everything looking rather nice. Um, and just at a glance, it seems to be all the geometry itself. Uh, we could spend just a minute now and grab the textures and okay. do some basic alignment and scaling, because you can see some of these walls, like that wall is a lot more stretched. But that's apparently because I took a shorter brush and then stretched it out uh, by moving the vertices. So what we could do um, to begin with is we could select all of the walls. Let me do a uh, Control Shift or excuse me, Shift W, grab all of the wall faces and hit F5 to bring up their properties. We could apply a default alignment to them, and you see those walls just snap back into place. So that's looking a lot better. Um, we could also I don't like how much the uh, texture is tiling on everything, so I could, let me see, could grab everything. Let me do a um, select all surfaces with matching texture, which is probably the same thing as doing select all surfaces at this point. Um, let me grab a scaling and apply a simple scaling of two, just so that we don't have as much repeating in all the patterns. Now at this point, um, since a lot of this level is going to be covered with static meshes, we don't have to worry too much about the texture alignment. If we want, though, we could look at some areas like these alcoves and try to make the uh, textures on the walls align a little bit better, because you can kind of see the repeat between these two. Um, so we could grab, let's, let's start with this one and just start moving it a little bit in U to see if we can get this um, to kind of match a little bit better. That makes it look nicer horizontally, but now there's no joining point at the top. Um, at this point, it really is just a matter of personal preference to try to find what seems to work best for your own level. Or you could even grab this face and try to shift it so that it aligns a little bit better with this wall. So I'm looking at it, I've kind of get, got to get some kind of dark spot to match up on that side if I want the texture to really look like it's matched. That matches that dark area, but then that repeats. I mean, really, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because in the end, we'll, we'll have an elevator back here, so it won't be as easy to see. Sure. But um, just some basic stuff we could do. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, the mesh, or the little indention into the ceiling. I kind of like how it's working along the, uh, yeah. the vertical axis there. And these sides are so small, they seem to line up fairly well already. So, I mean, unless there's anything major that you can see standing out... No, to be honest with you, um, I think that's pretty good for just getting a, a shell in place. Um, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it for BSP. Just to take a quick look over everything, It's all the shell looks pretty well defined from all the different views. Um, now, we may there may be very minor edits we need to do. Once we have all of the meshes in place and we know exactly how everything's going to be lining up, we might do some minor adjustments to a wall or to a ceiling. Sure. But, I mean, for the most part, this has everything laid out for BSP. So I think that's all we need to take care of. Okay. Sounds good. BSP section. So with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.